Hello everyone, Kent Bressler here. I want to welcome you to Kent's Kidney Stories. During our time together um, over these podcasts, I'd like to uh, discuss kidney disease. I'd like to tell you about my journey as a transplant patient, but also talk about dialysis, kidney donation, and just about anything else that might be of interest. Kent's Kidney Stories podcast endorsed and sponsored by kidneysolutions.org. Good morning, everybody. This is Kent Bressler, Kidney Solutions, kidneysolutions.org. And this morning, we're going to talk to Sejal Patel, who is a very good friend now, and uh, she is a kidney transplant patient, but also a pancreas transplant patient, and she's looking for a kidney donor. Before we get started, I'd like to, uh, to say a prayer. Dear Lord, our plates are full, and we seem to be in turmoil. Please give, give us the guidance and the assurance that all will be well through prayer. We offer our thanks for all you have given us, and ask that you send a kidney donor for Sejal and all of those who are seeking a living donor transplant. We ask this in your name, O Lord. Amen. Also, what I'd like to do this morning is thank uh, and give out my sincere condolences to Dr. Javier Campos's family. He died. He's a local uh, physician here in town in Kerrville, and he died August 31st uh, of COVID. I want you to just say your prayers for his family. Uh, and that's really all I can say. Bless him. He's, uh, he was a good friend. All right. Now we're going to talk with Sejal Patel, MD and researcher. And what we're going to do is she's really looking for a kidney donor. She has had a kidney donor transplant. But the most important thing about this now that it kidney has failed as she's looking for a living donor. And so we're going to talk to her this morning about how that's all taken place and how she's been doing. So Sejal, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I just have to admit this, you know, we started out and I forgot to hit the record button button for the second time. But anyway, I want to, I want to thank you for coming on. I have to laugh it off or I'll just go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> Listen, you, you you're on a on a on a real bumpy road here, kind of so to speak, right? You, so tell us tell us about tell us about your transplants, your dual transplant, pancreas uh -huh. and kidney. Give me an overview of what happened there. Okay, sounds good. So um, I back in. Um, Back when I was about 10 or 11, I had, um, I had been diagnosed with type one diabetes and that probably was an autoimmune condition that, um, my parents believe probably happened when we went to visit, a, visit India when I was about nine, because a couple of years later I came back and got type one diabetes and no one in our family had it. And, um, you know, we had never heard of it, nothing. So we're pretty sure that it was an autoimmune, um, Thing that happened most likely from the malaria. And, um, so, you know, I lived 20 years with type one diabetes and, um, about right after I finished medical school, I started feeling really weak and tired. And, um, you know, I just, I had just gone to Poland two years for my first two years and then went to Chicago and Ohio and finished up my rotations out there and then came back home to study for my board exams and while I was studying for my board exams, um, just started feeling really weak and dizzy and, um, you know, parents got concerned and I, I thought I just had anemia. So I called the doctor and got some blood work drawn. And of course it was anemia. And so they had sent me from, um, doctor to doctor, just kind of figuring out what was going on. They didn't know why I had this blood loss and where it was coming from and visited the GI doctor, the hematologist, oncologist, and, you know, they kept giving me iron and nothing was working. And so, um, you know, I went to see my endocrinologist on a regular basis every three months. And from the 
visit prior, right when I came back from med school to three months later, my creatinine jumped from normal to 2.5, just out of nowhere. And that's when we started getting alarmed because I had the anemia and the, and the um, jump in the creatinine. And my um, endocrinologist immediately sent me for a biopsy of my kidney at that time, just to see what was going on. And, you know, since it was such a fast jump, he thought maybe we can, you know, give her some steroids and it'll, you know, calm down the inflammation and, you know, she can go back to normal. But um, what ended up happening is it was um, stage five kidney disease at that point. So um, they had sent me to a nephrologist to see what could be done. And um, the biopsy results came back uh, probably about a month and a half later. And um, no one could really figure out what was going on with it. So they basically labeled the biopsy idiopathic and they had sent it to doctor to doctor or pathologist to pathologist trying to, you know, see if they could figure it out just so they could, you know, help what the cause was. But um, basically, you know, having type one diabetes and it being idiopathic, they basically um, called it type one diabetes, um, most likely is a cause of it. So um, from there, my nephrologist, you know, thought like she's young, let's send her to Mayo Clinic so that they can list her preemptively. Because at the time when I was in Tucson, um, the only hospital that was transplanting patients, they wouldn't put anyone on the list until they started dialysis. So um, they sent me to Mayo Clinic and I got the whole workup done. We spent like a week and a half out there and just got, you know, basically head to toe checked. And um, I ended up getting listed about a week and a half later at the Mayo Clinic site for a kidney and pancreas, which was kind of a surprise because I was only expecting to get a, a kidney, kidney transplant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, um, you know, they said, Hey, like, you know, you'd be a great candidate for a pancreas as well. So, um, that, you know, it would help with the life expectancy of your kidney just because eventually diabetes kills your kidney. And so, um, you know, me and my parents discussed and we were like, yes, that's great. Like, let's do both. Let's do and, it. Yeah. Yeah. It cured my type one diabetes. So now I never take insulin. I don't have to use the insulin pump and it's been like the greatest thing ever. So, um, I, you know, but they did, they did. There's a difference there, you know, going just for kidney and then doing both. What, uh -huh. Not everybody can do that. What, so yeah. what, what sets you apart from the, a person that can only have a kidney transplant and has to continue with their di diabetes? What is, What's the deal there? Um, so sometimes I guess they, they check your age. Like if you would, and, and just how well you would do, um, you know, like long-term. So since I was younger, you know, getting a kidney pancreas made more sense than, Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. than having an yeah. older person just because then, you know, my life survival would like the survival life of my kidney would last longer. Right. Plus, well. Plus you're type one diabetes, a young diabetic. You're not, you know, exactly. you're like ju I, they used to call it juvenile. I know it's just straight type one now, but uh -huh. that that's, that's significant. And that's the difference that, that we draw from. Okay. So you got this and how, how, how has it been? Uh, how it's long? Been, it's been amazing. So I got it in 2009, November in 2000, November, 2009 was my transplant date and my pancreas is working amazing. My you know, hemoglobin A1C is like about 4.9, which is oh. even better <laughs> than, than a diabetic. Yeah, person, really. The normal person even. So yeah. um, that's been working great. And my kidney lasted me quite a while until about, I would say it started um, getting weaker and weaker around about two years ago. And that's when um, my doctor was like, yeah, let's just go ahead and list you because, you know, it's getting time where like, you're probably going to need one soon. And so, you know, I got listed and I was a little scared when I heard that I was getting listed, but then I was also like not on dialysis and, you know, I was able to function and it didn't really hit me till I had to start dialysis. And that's when I was like, my kidneys failing, you know? And so I ended up having to start dialysis in January when I got Valley fever and in the, and it just killed the, any remaining any what was left kidney. yeah any yes. kidney function yeah exactly so, so did you try to find a living donor during that period of time I did for a little bit um you know I didn't have much luck 
I had a couple of people come forward, but um, they probably weren't the best candidates because they were, um, you know, they had they had other Issues. other ulterior yeah. motives, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so, so so consequently, did you uh, did you ever hear from your donors? I know it was family donors. It was it was a deceased donor, of course, that gave mm-hmm. you this. Have you I, had contact with them? I tried. I tried very hard. I wrote at least I wrote about three or four letters and I had never received contact. So at that point, I, I just figured, you know, maybe, maybe they weren't interested or maybe he didn't have family or, you know, yeah. I, I really didn't know what the, what the history was of him, what his story was. So um, I was hoping, cause he had actually, um, when I was driving up to Tucson for my transplant, he actually, um, my, the doctors were actually heading down to Tucson to pick up, the organs at the same time. So it was kind of, kind of, um, you crossed on the interstate. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of great that, um, they were, they were from Tucson as well. So I was really hoping that, you know, maybe we could meet, you know, the families or something, but it didn't end up happening. Well, that they know that you're willing to talk and, and that, you know, you never know five years from now, 10 years from now, you'll have a story that, and, and you maybe get to meet them. Exactly. That would okay. Be great. So, so what we're, what we're talking about here really is, in essence is finding you someone who'll step forward. You've yes. been through all of your family members. You've done all of the, your due diligence to find someone who in your family tree that would be um, able to donate. That's yes. correct. Okay. Yes. So we're down now to the nitty gritty. We're asking the public, we're asking mm-hmm. people that you, you know, the, the grocery man or the mailman or the mail lady or, Anybody in the world who just has, hears this, I want you to understand that all they got to do is call me. All right. We'll talk with them. We'll answer all their questions. And essentially what we want to do is make sure that you do get a donor and and Mm -hmm. we're going to work real hard to do that. I I guarantee it that we'll work real hard. Yeah. We can't guarantee you a a donor, but we'll guarantee you we'll work to get one to Mm -hmm. probably really hard. And you're, you've already, you've already done that. You've already, you know, bought into how we do this thing and, and you're, you know, getting the word out and that's important. So, Mm -hmm. so, so tell me, how do you, I was going to tell you also, I, I just remember something. Uh, There's a, this paired exchange and you're, you're all, because you're at Mayo, you get Mm -hmm. to, you get, the, the benefit of the Mayo Clinic, Mayo Clinic or hospitals in Florida, Mayo Clinic mm-hmm. in at, at Rochester, Minnesota, and then mm-hmm. in Arizona. So if people listen about to this, you'll go anywhere. You you will mm-hmm. personally go, and hopefully uh, that would be a, a good thing. And mm-hmm. yeah, there's also two other hospitals I want to I want to clue you into and. One of them is 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 Methodist in, in San Antonio. The other one is University in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. And I will give you their the numbers. I'll give you specific numbers to call to make it easier for you. Okay. But those two, those two, I think are are premier hospitals in my opinion because I've worked with them closely, and I want to make make sure you get a, a shot at that. Okay, uh, that sounds everything. great. Okay, so in general, how how do you feel now? How how do you how are you feeling? Um, I'm feeling okay. I, I mean, I haven't been as in the best of moods just because I'm not a big fan of dialysis. So, you know, if, you know, I feel like if I didn't have dialysis, my life would just be so much better, but, um, you know, I'm trying to make the best of it and fit it into my schedule and work around life around it. But, you know, it's kind of hard when you have eight hours of work and then eight hours of PD doesn't leave you much time in between to, you know, really have time to do anything else or, you know, hang out with friends or, you know, do the, do well, the just, normal just things. Just live, just live. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're, yeah, not, you're exactly. really just, ex, you know, existing to go to work, existing to come home and get on dialysis and you're on PD. Yep. And so like, yep. that's what exactly how many hours of, of PD are you doing? Um, eight hours. Yeah. Yeah. See, so there, there, yeah. therein lies the rub. And that's why we want to get, find someone who's willing to donate to you. Mm-hmm. And there, I say they're out there. You know that it's in yes. your heart. It I, is. I've known, I've known you now for just a short time, but I, I really can relate to your attitude. You've got a great attitude. Everything you, 
you want to do, you're going to get, you're going to succeed at it. I can tell that in just the way you carry yourself. So, yeah. So, so uh, you've done a, a lot of things. You're in research right now, I understand. And uh -huh. tell, tell us about your career moves. How are you going to do this? What are you going to do in the in your career field as an MD and such? Um, so right now I'm uh, working in clinical research with um, a kidney with the kidney transplant group. So um, I really enjoy it. I, we get to work on different um, clinical research protocols. Like you know we've been working on some for COVID nineteen and immunosuppressed patients and trying to see what we can do to increase antibodies in that population. Just because um, you know as we've seen on the news, solid organ transplants are not doing so well in terms of building antibodies after the vaccine. So um, we're trying to look into different methods of how we can, you know, maybe stop immunosuppressants for two weeks and then possibly, um, you know, lower doses or do something where like the body can build up that immunity towards COVID-19 to help, help, you know, our population of transplant patients to build that immunity. And we're looking at other things about um, how we can, you know, have your kidney last for a lifetime by preventing rejection episodes or, you know, just, just different things where like, we can, you know, even we've even looked at the point where like, we can get you off of your immunosuppressants by injecting the donor stem cells into the, into the, um, you know, into the recipient and seeing if that helps, you know, them build antibodies so that they don't reject the organ. So we're doing a lot of exciting things trying to um, advance the field of transplant medicine forward. Listen, I, I did not realize that. I knew you were in research. Now mm -hmm. you really got my interest going. <laughs> this is just fantastic. I, there is a, there are currently people who cannot get retransplanted because of issues, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. So, so I think there's a lot of, of room in there to, to do research and the research oh, yeah. in FSGS and, and IGA and, oh, and yeah. the Alports and all of those disease processes. And mm -hmm. you're right in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's even, even people that have such high levels of, um, you know, antibodies in their systems that, they aren't able yes. to accept many organs. And now we're looking at medicines that can, you know, possibly lower that level just to a point where we can transplant them. So we're looking at a lot of amazing things. Well, after we get off here, I've got a gal's name that I'd like you to talk to. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds great. I don't want to blurt out her name here, but I do. It, well, it's my podcast. Jill, Jill's out there. She, she could use some help in that area. And I know she'd be willing to participate in any study you got going. Oh yeah, we have. Yeah. That'd okay. Be well, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to set you up with these two. Okay. okay. So I'm also going to set you up with the fact that we are going to check and, and make sure we try to get you a donor. I want you to okay. tell, tell me how important it is now as we start closing up here, how is it important? How important is it to you to get a donor? It's very important. I, I just want to be able to, you know, give back what, what God has given me. I mean, I, I've gotten so many extra years out of my life just for my first transplant from my kidney and pancreas. I've been able to, you know, see things, enjoy things, go on trips and, um, you know, see my nephew and niece born and play with them and, you know, see such amazing things that, you know, I would never would have if I didn't get a, get a amazing gift from, from an amazing recipient. So, um, I mean, an amazing donor. So yeah, I just, I just want to be able to live longer and fulfill, you know, all the dreams and help give back to everyone what, you know, I I've, I've been given. So that's my main goal and excitement about getting it, getting a new organ right now. So I'm just we're, excited to live life. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're right. We're right where we need to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are right where we need to be. I know it sounds silly to say, but we're going to stay in our lane and we're going to find a donor. All right. Sounds I tell great. that to everybody that I work with. All I want for that. I told my wife last night, I sit in the chair and I just blurted it out. I just wish that I could get everybody transplanted tomorrow. If I had my choice, if at my wish, my genie wish or my prayer were answered, it would be everybody that I'm working with and everybody mm -hmm. that needs to get a transplant. 
And that's, that's how important that's how important it is to me. All right. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna work really, really hard on that. We'll 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 figure something out. It'll come to us. Don't know when God chooses that. He he okay. sends them. We're not gonna find them. He sends them to us. Yes. Okay? yes All right. I agree. And and so we're asking him in our prayers and efforts, please send someone. We're asking you now. This is the time. We're ready and we're willing to take care of it. Send them. And that's that's where we're at. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I want to I want to also do a, a little shameless plug for a really good friend of mine. I know you got to converse with her, Payal Shaw. Oh, yes. She's <laughs> amazing. I loved her. <laughs> that Payal is, you know, uh, almost 20, I think 23 years with the, with the kidney. She was a, 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 a pediatric kidney transplant patient at 15. Mm-hmm. So you guys have a lot in common. And I'm glad I connected with you. And I'm going to get you connected with some of my pancreas kidney transplant patients that okay. uh, that I think you could, will benefit from. At least it will buoy you up somewhat. So, yeah, that sounds amazing. I know you're on the list. We talked about it, about being on the list. But your emphasis is, you know, having to wait on the list for almost five years or maybe even longer to get it. Mm-hmm. What happens today if you get a phone call? from the hospital and say, Hey, we have a deceased kidney for you. What are you going to do? I'll accept it. <laughs> okay. And that's, and that's true. That do you believe that's what people should do? They shouldn't turn one down. I think so. I mean, you know, life is life and, you know, sure. Everybody wants a live donor or, you know, because they, they say they last longer, but you know, it doesn't matter. Just, no. Yeah. yeah. I know Just people who Yes, I know people who've had had deceased kidneys for twenty five years. Mm-hmm. They're yeah, in the, they're true. in the they're they're in the uh, quarter century club. Yeah, and and so I know so I know true. it happens, right? It's all mm-hmm. in 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 genetics, uh, if you will, but it's also an attitude and generally how you take care of yourself. Exactly. So, so our prayers are answered because I got to be your friend, and I want to make sure that you know that we're going to at kidney solutions, we're going to do all we can possibly do. All that right. Amazing. Yes. I love that. <laughs> all right. So in, before we leave, what, what is it that in your mind, is there anything that we've missed to do want to say? Um, not, not really. I think, I think we talked about a lot of good stuff and we had a really good conversation. I want you to know that we have a support group on Monday nights for kidney patients. Okay. And it's at six o'clock and it's good. It'd be like five o'clock, probably just when you're getting off work. Mm -hmm. I think you would be, it would be an advantage to all the people that go to that. Plus you to show up for that at some point in time, anytime, just drop in. You don't have to be there right on time. You when it drop in, uh, okay. We try to get it done in an hour, but you come in and if you come in and we stay a lot of people, we're going to, we're going to keep going. All right. We don't have okay. a time constraint. All right. I think that it'd be, good. I think it'd be helpful. And people would love to hear your story and, and would love to, to help you out. Maybe one, uh, we can, we can uh, use that as a vehicle for, a, for a donor. I can introduce you to some people that will get your, going to get your story out. Uh, okay. James Myers does a great job and, Jonathan Trailer, we have a, a bunch of volunteers that are willing to pump out uh, your your story. Okay. Okay. And, that sounds uh, great. I, I think that I think that that would be a good deal. So whenever you can, at your will. Okay. And, and I I want to tell everybody that's listening. Let's pay attention to my plea here. That everybody that is in on dialysis and everybody that's in kidney failure looking for a living donor. It's going to be happening if they believe that. They have to believe that, that, that it's going to happen. We don't have control of when, but we do have control of it, it's going to happen. You have to have that belief. You do. So, yeah. so I just want you to know that, that we're here at Kidney Solutions, and people out there should go to kidneysolutions.org if they need information on kidney. Or they know people who know. Refer them into there. Everything that we do at Kidney Solutions I'm going to say the word free. It is. It, it is just totally, there's no fees. We have no fees at Kidney Solutions. You get a, a expertise and a lot of help, but you don't have to pay for it. And we'll get you tried to help you guide it into that living donor situation. 
and the sooner the better. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Agree. All right. Sound agree. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna wind it up, and we're gonna we're gonna try to make sure everything works out really well for you and for all the folks that are out there looking for a transplant. And uh, thank you for coming on, even if we had a little technical difficulty. <laughs> That's no problem at all. Thank <laughs> you so much for inviting me, Ken. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. We'll get around. We'll do some more. Maybe we get you out, out in the circle. Maybe we can get Jim to take a look at your story too. Oh, so, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah we'll, we're, we're going to work it. And okay. thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody, everybody out there now, thank you so much for listening and and pass it on. We're uh, we're looking for a kidney donor, a living kidney donor. And (coughs) excuse me, Sejal is is an important person in life. And we have a lot of people at Kidney Solutions that are looking for donors. So go on our website, kidneysolutions, one word, dot org. And uh, look at all of our listings in the waiting section. And uh, from now on, I'll keep telling you this. Keep breathing.